what is good everybody tunji again from scissor graphics welcome to my channel if you're new don't forget to hit the subscribe button and remember to ring that bell so you will be notified when i post my tutorials today i'm teaching you guys how to make this effect with photoshop i got this from one of my group members after asking them to send in effects they would like me to achieve with photoshop and one cool thing about this tutorial is the part where we have the circle effect so without any further ado let's jump into today's tutorial okay so i'm going to put the link to the exercise file in the description section so the first thing we are doing now is to create the radial effect so i'm going to drag and drop my hd background image i'll go to image i'll go to image size and make sure that this chain is on check so i'm going to click on it because if we don't um it's going to affect the resizing of the image the way we want it so i'm going to unchain this and i'll copy the width and i'm gonna paste it on the height like so all right so we have 1920 by 1920 so i'm gonna click ok so we have this so i'm gonna zoom in what i'm gonna do now is to make a copy of this i'm gonna drag it and drop like so and i'm gonna zoom out then i'm gonna bring out the free transform so what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna hold down shift and drag this up because if we don't do this we won't be able to achieve the effect that we want to do so i'm going to hit enter on my keyboard so what i'm going to do now is to use the rectangle marquee tool to just um, draw a marquee shape around my background copy layer and i'm going to duplicate the layer with ctrl j okay and i'll go to filter distort and i'll select polar coordinates like so so if i zoom out i should have this hit ok so I, i'm going to bring out the free transform again and i'll scale this down like so and you see we have we are having this um, line here which is not helping the look of the project so what i'm going to do is i'm going to draw uh, a marquee shape here like so and i'm going to duplicate it with ctrl j okay now i'm going to move this up and i'm going to bring out the free transform and i'll rotate this so i'll show me here so i'm going to zoom in and um, use my up and down arrow key to um, adjust the position so next is to um, select the layer mask icon and i'm going to select the brush tool and i'm going to increase the size of my brush and i'm just going to take out this part from the layer and we have this i'm going to merge the two layers by shift selecting the two layers and i'm going to hit ctrl e on my keyboard to merge it and now i'm going to go back to my elliptical marquee tool all right and i'm going to draw And I'm gonna hit a Ctrl J on my keyboard. And I'll hide this. So we have this now. Okay, so I don't think we need this anymore. So I'm gonna delete this and I'm gonna delete this. So the next thing I'm gonna do now is to resize the frame of my project. So I'm gonna go to image and I'm gonna go to image size. Then I'm going to change this to 1280 by 1280. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because I know the size of my other element is not as big as the frame size of this project. So I need to scale it down. When I'm placing those contents on my project, I'm still going to have the sharp look of those uh, contents. I'm going to click the OK button. So now I need to convert this to a smart object. So I'm going to bring out a free transform and scale it down like so. OK, so uh, the next thing I'm going to do is to create a new layer and I'll move this hit down be behind the polar coordinates effect layer and i'm gonna call this gradient now as you can see we're having this white fill at the center of our effect so i need to take that out so i'm gonna go to my magic one two over here and i'm gonna click so select the white fill and i'm going to 
zoom in, I'll go to select, modify, and I'll select expand. Now, what we're trying to do now here is I want the Marcus selection to go in a little bit because by the time I apply my um, layer mask to this, it's possible we may end up having some white uh, lines around our selection. So I'm going to just hit OK now. All right. And I'll go to my layer mask icon here. OK. Now, the next thing we're not going to do is to hit the Control I on our keyboard to reverse the mask. And we have this. So I'm going to go to my gradient tool now. And I'll come here. Then um, the color I'll be using here is going to be um, 3B5961. And I'm going to hit OK. So for this one, I have C3, C8, C1. And I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to set OK here. Then I'm going to make sure I'm on the linear gradient option here. And I'm going to zoom out. OK. Then I'm going to hold on Shift, drag, like so. All right. Next thing I'm going to do is to draw shape below the radial effect and i'm going to go to my um, foreground color and i'll pick a color from here then i'll use the sh darker shade of that color like so okay then i'm going to hit okay so i'm going to create a new layer and i'll call this shadow then i'm going to fill this with alt backspace okay because all backspace is what you're going to use to apply the color of your foreground to your layer. I'll go to filter, blur, and I'll select um, Gaussian blur like so. So I'm going to move this back. Okay. Then I'm going to reduce the opacity of this. So the next thing I'm going to do is to make a copy of the shadow layer and I'll call this. I'm going to go to filter, blur, and I'll select motion blur. So this should fade this angle. and Move this out like so. This is good. So I'm going to shift select the two layers and I'll bring out a free transform. Move this up like so. So what I'm going to do is on the uh, shadow layer, I'm going to add a layer mask and I'll select the brush tool. All right. And I will increase the size of my brush and I'm just going to pick out some parts of the shadow. So I'm going to draw another ellipse, like so. But this time, I'm going to make this really dark, like so. And I'm going to make a new layer, this shadow. All right, and I'll hold, hold backspace to fill the color of my foreground. So the layer, and I'll go to Filter, Blur, and I'll select Gaussian Blur. And this should go up more, like so. All right, and I'll bring out a free transform. This down. Now I'm holding on Shift because I'm using Photoshop CC 2020, bringing the picture of my spot man. All right, so I'm gonna position this here, and what I'm gonna do now is because cropping out this um, bicycle is gonna take forever. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the uh, Electrical Marquee tool, and I'll go to select and mask because I'm using Photoshop CC 2020. And I'm going to select the select objects like so. And I'm going to select the refined edge, and I'm going to just take this out. And I'll click on the OK button. So if you don't have Photoshop CC 2020 and you are looking for the uh, select and mask option, simply go to select and then you see select and mask here. Or also, all right, so once you click on it, it will give you the same um, window. All right, so I'm going to move this here like so. And we still need this. So I'm going to make a copy of this like so. And I'll just select the two layers. And I'll drag it and drop 
on my project like so but this should be above all the layers so in order to not make um our layer look too busy i'm going to put the radial effects and it's and the shadow in a group so i'm going to shift select the layers and i'm going to hit ctrl g on my keyboard and i'll pull this radial so this is going to be the crop layer while this is going to be a fill okay for the fill we need to blend it this so as to take out those white color from the image so i'm going to double click on this to bring out the blend diff option and i'm going to move from i'm going to move this from here to here but we need to take the um, effect off so i'm going to hold on alt again and break it and this should come here this should just go somewhere around here so i saw an absolute okay so i'm going to zoom out and we have this now we are losing some part of the bicycle so i need to go back here and i'm going to move this back like so let me just push this back here like so all right so i'm going to hit okay so what i'm going to do is um, is i'm going to add a layer max to the layer of the field and i'm going to zoom in and i'll select the brush too then i'm just going to take out this bottom part of the fill layer, just like so. Now you see we've seen some lines here, so we need to take that those out also. So it's on this layer. So I'm just going to increase the size of my brush and I'm just going to take them out. So we need to create um, a shadow so as to make this look more real. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is to convert this to a smart object. So I'll right click and convert it to a smart object. And I'm going to uh, hold down control and click because we're about to create a shadow for him. And I'm going to um, click, hold down alt and click to create a new layer and call this um, Spock Man. So I'm going to hold down alt and click to apply the color of my um, foreground to the layer. And I'm going to hit the control D on my keyboard to deselect the Marquis selection. And I'm going to move this up so you guys can see what I'm about to do. Then I'm going to bring out the free transform. So I'm just going to hold down shift and drag down like so. And I'm going to rotate this position here. Okay. Position this here. Okay. And I'll right click and select the warp option and this should go up like so let me go move this here right, like so and we have this so i'm gonna hit the enter key on my keyboard and i'll go to filter blur and i'll select gaussian blow and this should go down a little bit all right it should go down just a little bit like so and i'm gonna select okay now the next thing i'll do is to reduce the opacity of this just like so all right now i'm going to uh, make a copy of this but this time i'm going to add a layer mask to this and i'm going to hit the control i on my keyboard just to reverse the mask and i'm going to zoom in and make sure that my foreground is set to white and I'm just going to add. Then we have this. Now, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'll add a layer mask. And I'll select the brush too. Increase the size of my brush. And then I'm going to switch this back to black. And I'm just going to take this out of the shadow. Then I'm going to hold on Control and click. On this and I'm going to create a new layer I'm going to call this fill all right and I'm going to hold on alt and click on the backspace to fill the layer and I'm going to convert this to a smart object because I'm going to be using this a lot so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reduce the opacity all right and I'm going to bring out the free transform and I'll move this down So I'm going to go to my adjustment panel and I'm, I'm going to bring out the color lookup option 
and I'll use night from day option and I'll change my blend mode to multiply. Then I'll reduce the opacity. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the uh, radial effect layer and I'll hold on control and click on the thumbnail of the radial effect and I'll select the layer mask of the color lookup and I'll fill it with black. So we need to deselect first and I'm going to hold on control I on my keyboard. So I'm going to hold on control and click on the layer mask of the radial effect layer and I'm going to hit Ctrl Shift I to reverse the map and I'm going to hold on Alt and bar space to fill the layer marks of the color lookup with the color of my foreground. So I'm going to hit the Ctrl D on my keyboard to deselect. Now we notice that we everything is looking darker, so we need to adjust that. So I'm going to select the brush too, then I'm going to increase the size of my brush. Make sure that um, this is set to black which is your foreground and I'm just going to take out some hats of the color lookup so another thing I'm going to do again is I'm going to create a new layer and call this shadow okay now I'm going to hold on control and click to make a mark of the shape of the radial effects layer and I'm going to add a layer mask then I'm going to do the same thing here again. I hold on control and click. I mean, hold on control and click here effect. And I'm going to hold on control shift and I to reverse selection. And I'll select the shadow layer. And I'm going to hold on control and apply the color of my background to the layer mask of the shadow layer. And we have this. So I'm going to hit control D on my keyboard. Now, if I select the thumbnail of the shadow layer, if I apply the, my brush to this part of the layer, you see it's not going outside of my radial effect, thanks to the layer marks. So I'm going to um, start from here. I'm just going to apply brush to this side. Hold on Control and click. Excuse me. Control and click on the thumbnail of the fill layer. And I'm going to hit Ctrl Shift and I to reverse the selection. And I'm going to select the brush tool again. Now make sure you're on the shadow layer. And I'm just going to brush. Hit Ctrl H on my keyboard just to hide the map. Now hit Ctrl D on my keyboard to deselect the map with selection. So what I'm going to do now is to take out the shadow effect from the ring around my radial effect. So to do that, I'm going to uh, move this above every other layer here and I'm going to make it visible. Then I'm going to hit Ctrl T on my keyboard to bring on the free transform and I'm going to scale this big like so. It's here and hit enter on my keyboard. So what I'm going to do is to hold down Ctrl and click on the thumbnail of the fill layer to create a mark of it and I'm going to hit Ctrl Shift I to reverse the selection and I'll select the thumbnail of the shadow layer and hit the backspace on my keyboard and we have that shadow effect off from the ring. The next thing I'm going to do now is to bring in our cars. So I already have my car cropped here so I'm going to drag that and drop here like so and I'm going to scale this down. With Alt, hold down, and I'm gonna move this down here. All right, and I'll hit Enter. Now we need to clean up our layer panel, so I use Shift and click to select all the layers, and I'm gonna hit Ctrl G on my keyboard to put them in a group. And I'll put the spot man. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to um, position my car where I want it. So I'm going to bring on the free transform and I'm going to rotate this and I'll move this down. So in short, we need to zoom in so we can see this clearly. So I'm going to move this down and I'll right click and select skew. So I'll use shifts and alt held down to change the perspective of the layer. And I'll right click and select scale again, hold down shift and push it down and push it in like so. Go to the adjustment panel and bring out the hue saturation and I'll click on this icon just to um, make it apply to just only the car layer. 
and I'll move down and just se and select colorize. So what we're going to be doing with the hue adjustment is to change the colors of our car so we can have different colors for the car. So I'm going to move this here. I'll start with red. This here, so we have a red car. All right. And on the layer mask of the hue, we are going to take out some part of the hue from the car. So I'm going to use I'm going to use a hard brush to do this and I'll turn off transfer. All right. And I'm just going to make so that I'll make sure this is set to black. And I'm going to brush to take out some part of the um, hue saturation from the car. So to make it look more real. All right. So I'm going to hold on control. All right, create a new layer and call this car shadow. Then I'll fill this with black, which is the color of my foreground. And I'll hit Ctrl D on my keyboard and I'll go to footer, blur, and I'll select Gaussian blur. Okay, and I'll add a layer mask to this. I'll select the brush tool. I'm not going to take out now. Make sure you're on the soft round brush and turn on the transfer option if you're using a graphics tablet. But if you don't have a graphics tablet, you can play with the flow. All right, you can reduce the flow, and you know, as I apply the brush, it will be giving you different brush strengths. Okay, so I'm going to take out this part from the layer, and I'll do the same thing here. Then I'll make a copy of this again. This time I'm gonna to go to filter, blur, select motion blur. All right, so I'm gonna put everything in a group, like so. And I'll call this car. So I'm gonna zoom out, and then we have this. So I'm gonna make a copy of this car. All right, and I'm gonna move position this here, rotate it. With the free transform and put a position here and i'm going to go straight inside the group of the car and play with the hue just like so so as to give it another shade of um, color like so i'm going to um, close this okay so i'm going to make a copy of this and this should be far from the other case. So I'm going to skip this part of the tutorial so as to save time. All right. All right. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select these three cars and position them behind this shadow layers here so i'm going to drag it and drop inside the same group with the shadows so as to make it look like this part is actually darker so i'm going to close this all right now the next thing we're going to do is to create our lights and i'm going to create a new layer and i'll select the shape tool which is rectangle tool and So I'm going to click on the direct selection tool and I'll click here and use my arrow key on my keyboard to move this to my right like so and move this to the left like so. So we have this and I'm going to move everything just a little like so and I'm going to create a new layer. And I'll call these lights, or let's just call it glow. And I'll change the color of this to orange, just like so. Let's just use light orange, like so. Now select the brush tool. Now make sure you're on the soft round brush, turn off this transfer option. And if your flow is reduced, turn it, make, it, make sure your flow is set to 100. And I'm just going to click, and I'll do the same thing here, like so. 
Now the next thing I'm going to do is to hold on Alt and click and call this um, lights, and I'll, I'm going to change the color. I'm going to change the mode to color dodge. Excuse me, and I'll select the fill with color dodge neutral color black option here, and I'll select OK. So, but something is about to happen now. So I'm going to hit the free transform shortcut on my keyboard, and I'll scale this down. All right. And I'm going to move this in just like so, and I'll hit enter. Now, it's about, so it's time for us to do the magic. So I'm just going to move this here and hit OK. So reduce the size of my brush. Click here and click here. So we have a street light. So I'm going to put everything in a group. So I'll go, I'm going to call this. Yeah, so I'm going to put all my cars in a group. So all these cards. Now you see how neat my layer panel is. So if I zoom out now, we have this. So what I'm gonna do again is to make copies of the street lights. So I'm gonna hit Ctrl T on my keyboard and rotate this and position this here. So We're almost getting to the end of this tutorial, so I'm going to go to the adjustment panel and select the hue saturation, and I'm going to just reduce the hue. I'm going to open the um, radial effects layer, and I'm going to hold on Control and click on the thumbnail of the radial effects, and I'm going to fill the layer max of my hue with the color of my foreground which is black so i'm going to hold on ctrl and click to apply the color to my foreground now the next thing i'm going to do is to hold ctrl shift and i to reverse the excuse me so i'm going to hit ctrl d on my keyboard to deselect that and i'm going to so i'm going to hit ctrl high on my keyboard to reverse the selection and the next thing i'm going to do is to hold down ctrl and click to on the thumbnail of the fill layer now you see that the fill layer is very important here. So I'm going to hold on Alt and Backspace to apply the color of my foreground to the layer max of the hue. So I'm going to hit Ctrl D on my keyboard to deselect. So I'm going to go to my adjustment panel and bring down the curve adjustment. So I'm going to duplicate the layer mask of my hue and apply it to my curve layer mask. So I'm going to hold on Alt and drag and release my hand from my keyboard to do that. And I'm going to go to the curve layer and I'm going to push this up like so so as to just give you this metallic feel so i'm going to do some crystals like so the next thing we're doing is to apply our cloud so i'm going to drag that and drop here like so if i zoom in now you see we're having these white um lines around our cloud which is not good at all so what i'm going to do is i'm going to hold on control and click and i'm going to add layer marks to this Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do on the layer mask of the cloud layer, I'm going is to go to filter and I'm going to select order and select minimum. All right, now I'm going to move this in. Now we don't have that white line around our cloud anymore, so I'm going to hit OK. But the cloud is looking too sharp. I'm going to select the um, layer mask of the cloud and I'm going to go straight to my property um, panel here. On that feather, I'm going to just move this up like so now you see we're beginning to have that blurry edges around our cloud i'll select the layer mask of the cloud again and then i'm going to select my brush too and i'm going to use this type of brush here and i'm going to turn on my transfer option okay i can even rotate this all right so this is what we have now so this is good so um, another thing i want to do again is I want the bottom part of my cloud to be darker. So I'm going to select the adjustment um, panel here uh, or adjustment tab, and I'm going to bring out the curve adjustment like so. I'm going to move this down. So you know what? Let's just move this up a bit so you guys can see. I'm going to push this down like so. All right. And I'm going to click on this icon because I want it to apply to just only the cloud layer. And I'm going to change this to luminosity. 
and this should go down all right and i'm going to hit ctrl i on my keyboard to reverse the selection and i'm going to select the brush to select the um soft round brush and i'm just going to brush I'm going to go to the adjustment tab again and add another curve, but this time this is going to go up like so. So I'm going to hold on Alt and duplicate the layer mask of the very first curve that we created and apply it to the um, curve that we just created now. So I'm just going to hold on Alt and click and drag and drop here like so. And I'm going to hit Control I on my keyboard to reverse the selection. All right, and I'm going to just reduce the opacity just a little. Uh, you know what? Let's just put this in a group. And I'll call this cloud. All right, and I'll create a new layer. Okay, and this should be here. And I'll hold on Alt and duplicate the layer mask of the curve and apply it to the new layer. And I'm going to call this brush. Then I'm going to select the brush tool increase the size of my brush and make sure that my foreground is set to white and i'm just going to apply the white to this box so the next thing we are doing now is to take this to camera roll so but before we do that we need to stamp visible of all the layers so i'm going to hold down ctrl shift alt and e just convert this to a smart objects first and i'm going to go to filter and i'll go to camera roll filter here all right so here we are now in camera roll so I'm going to move this down. Beautiful. So this is the before and this is the after. So there's one other thing I would like to do again. I would like to hide light to the um to my character so to do that i'll go straight to the group of the spot man and i'm going to hold on control and create a maku of the character all right and create a new layer above the camera layer and i'm going to pull these lights so i'm going to go to select modify and expand so this should be one and i'll select okay so what I'm going to do is to hit Ctrl H on my gimbal just so as to hide the Marquis selection and I'm going to select the brush tool. There's one last thing I almost forgot to do. It's called the road marks. So to do that, I'm going to create a new layer and I'll call this road max. Um, a lift shape tool. To do this, so I'm going to change the field to no field and I'll change the stroke to white. Just hide this. So I'm going to go to my move tool and I'll double click to bring out the blend if option. So I'm going to add a layer mask and I'll select the brush tool, select the hard brush. So I'm going to start with this one here. Just gonna take the line off the car here. All right, and I'm gonna go again and check for another car. Okay, this is fine. I think I have it on this one. All right. And um, I can still, let's see if I reduce this stroke a little bit more. Let's see what we got for seven. And this is the final project. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and if you have not subscribed don't forget to hit the subscribe button and remember to ring the bell 
so you will be notified when i post my tutorials i'll see you guys again in the next one peace